It's March the 10th, 1967. Four F-4 Phantom IIs from the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing, 433rd Tactical Fighter Squadron, are taking off from an airbase in Thailand. The weather's good and the four planes take a heading for Hanoi in North Vietnam. The element leader is Captain Bob Pardo. In the rear seat is his weapon systems officer, Lieutenant Steve Wayne. Their mission is to take out steel mills nearby the city. The Vietnamese are very much prepared. The area surrounding Hanoi has some of the best air defenses in aviation history. Approaching Hanoi, still under clear skies, the F-4s are at 13,000 feet. They can see the path to the target as it's like a pathway of anti-aircraft fire. Plane number four has Captain Earl Amon in the front and Lieutenant Bob Houghton behind. Amon's plane is hit. Fortunately, it's not a critical hit this time and Amon manages to keep his place in the formation. Going into a steep dive, the F-4s release their bombs. But under the heavy fire, disaster strikes as Amon's plane is hit again by anti-aircraft fire. Then, Pardo's plane is hit too. Both planes are now streaming fuel and they need to decide what to do next. They turn for Laos, where they can rendezvous with a KC-135 tanker before pushing on to Thailand. With the two planes now ascending to 20,000 feet, Amon radios to Pardo. There's bad news. The F-4 is now leaking so much fuel that he's not going to make it. The tanks are almost empty. Pardo checks his fuel. Even though they have lost a lot, Pardo can just make it to Laos for the rendezvous with the tanker. Eamon and Pardo talk on the radio, and Eamon relays his plan. His best bet is to fly as long as he can, and then he and Houghton will eject over North Vietnam. All the men know it's a dire situation. Ejecting over North Vietnam meant almost certain capture and a long stay in a Vietnamese POW camp, if they were lucky. Pardo had the fuel to make it to the tanker, but just couldn't bring himself to do it. Radioing back, he told Eamon he was going to stay with him as long as he could. Maybe he could come up with an idea. To make it worse, Eamon's engines were spluttering and losing power. Pardo didn't have much time to think. A flash of inspiration hit him. He maneuvered behind Houghton's plane and carefully approached from the rear, lining up the nose of his F4 with the rear of the other. He tried to give it a push. He was going to use his high-tech $2.4 million plane to give a boost to the other Phantom. With Eamon's spluttering engines running, the turbulence was causing issues. Pardo told Eamon to eject his drag chute from the back of the plane. That left open a small hatch, which for a while gave Pardo's F4 a bit more purchase. The turbulence wasn't helping the plan, so he told Eamon to shut down his engines, just in case he needed those final drops of fuel. Despite Pardo's skill as a pilot, the Phantom's nose cone that was ideal for slipping through the air also made it ineffective as a ram to push another plane. Trying again and again and failing, he had another flash of inspiration. Originally, the F-4 was designed as a fighter bomber for the Navy. As such, it had a rear hook that allowed it to land on aircraft carriers. Getting on the radio once more, Bob Pardo told Earl Amon to lower his tail hook. Lining up again and coming in close, Bob maneuvered to get the tail hook smack in the middle of his windscreen. The strength of the glass in front of his face took the full weight of the injured F-4 and pushed it through the heavens. It worked. That is until turbulence shook the two planes, causing the tail hook to slide off. Getting the hook back on the glass, the glass started to crack under the pressure, forming a spider web immediately in front of Bob's face. If the glass gave way, it would mean certain death. Again and again, Bob kept on like this, with every 15 seconds or so, the tail hook slipping off the windscreen. Incredibly, it slowed the descent of the stricken F4 to just 1,500 feet per minute. Alarms went off inside Pardo's plane. The left engine was on fire. He immediately shut it down. Needing two engines for the push, he went through the startup procedure. The fire started up again. Pardo's left engine was critically damaged. Carrying on with just one engine, keeping the two F4s in the air, he realized that his fuel had finally been spent. The two planes had traveled 88 miles under the power of one crippled F-4. 
They had just made it across the border to Laos. Pardo watched as Eamon and Houghton ejected from their bird. Immediately after, Wayne and Pardo followed suit, shooting up into the heavens before descending into the jungle below. Laos was also a war zone at the time, and the natives conducted a search for the downed pilots. Hearing shouting and shooting in the jungle, the four men managed to avoid the locals. After just 45 minutes on the ground, all the men were whisked away by a rescue helicopter. Incredibly, despite his heroic act, there was talk of charges against Pardo for not getting his expensive plane home. But thankfully, reason prevailed and the charges were dropped. 20 years later, the events of that day were revisited and finally, Major John R. Pardo and his man in back, First Lieutenant Steve Wayne, received the Silver Star for their actions on that day. Most of our viewers aren't yet subscribers. If that's you, please support the channel by hitting subscribe. Thank you.